Shamaya and welcome to Bitcoin Coffee Break, the show in which we have a quick look at the Bitcoin price and some of the other markets which may be affecting it. Bitcoin is at $7,857, it's had a high of $8,188 and a low of $7,800 and it's dropped 4%. Um, yeah, I mean, so on a, on a long term time frame here, Bitcoin very much looks like it's kind of recovered from uh, the, the crazy parabolic run of, of 2017 and then the crash of 2018. It looks like it's plateauing out. When we zoom in, uh, we've got our cup and handle, which, you know, happened over the past sort of seven, eight months. And then that would predict that the price could still rise, you know, significantly by at least a thousand dollars or a couple of thousand dollars. And then we zoom in a little bit further and the candles end up being too thick. So we can't really make out what's going on. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, if we uh, if we zoom in a little bit further to the past couple of months, uh, we've had this obviously this huge uh, run up in price. Um, and now, I mean, the, to me, the price is looking pretty synthetic. There's this, like a lot of whale action going on. These these large shifts up, large shifts down, and then plateaus. Um, uh, so it's very much the whales are playing, and you know they could trigger the price to to pop up even you know, to, to much higher or, or much lower. Let's have a look at the look, a little look at the news feed, shall we? Uh, support zones for Bitcoin price is 5k the worst prediction that might actualize uh, no obviously we could there's that hyperwave prediction of $1,500 which I think is actually quite plausible if uh, we had a, a, a you know if we turned the, if we had a nice steep drop down um, and then the FUD really kicked in and everyone thought okay yeah the Bitcoin price is crash, crashing again and it could easily drop down to $1,500 and, and beyond you know um, um, so bulls will push Bitcoin price to 10K before leaving the scene. Uh, when will the predicted Bitcoin dump happen? So, um, yeah, I mean, on the flip side of that, obviously, in this sort of short medium term time frame, we have uh, the bulls could easily push the price up to 10K. I mean, they, they pushed it up a couple of grand, you know, over the past um, uh, couple of weeks very easily. So um, they could do the same to, to, set to 10K. Uh, we have got a lot of on ramping for institutional investments such as fidelity and backed and we've also not just got the on ramping we've also got increased interest in in being on ramped um, by institutional investors we've also got huge technological improvements and bitcoin being used for a whole range of um, uses uh, we've got you know companies like microsoft are now interested in they're building on bitcoin and they're not pushing this sort of blockchain narrative anymore so i'm waiting for the bitcoin not blockchain um uh narrative or, or or phrase to kind of get into the mainstream um so so yeah it'll be it'll be and then we have also got the bitcoin um acting uh negatively uh, you know against the, the the stock market traditional stock markets um whereas gold has, has, has not done that so um it looks quite good as a maybe a future safe haven for putting your money in when when the stock markets start to crash and dump so so yeah so but in the short term time frame in the short to medium term time frame it could go up it could go down it's uh, it's very unpredictable who knows uh, ethereum so ethereum's looking if if it weren't for the fact that it it rides off the tail coat of bitcoin i would say it's it's well no i mean on a longer time frame here it kind of looks like it's flattened out from its crash um, and then we had these uh, over the past six months, we had these three rising peaks and then it fulfilled that promise and went up $100. Um, and then um, uh, now I would say that it's had that parabolic run up and it looked, this was to me looks like a dead cat bounce, but obviously the price of Ethereum is entirely dependent upon Bitcoin and if Bitcoin pumps up, then so will Ethereum. Um, so this is why it's so incredibly dangerous to trade these things um, because they're, they're, they're so dependent upon what bitcoin decides to do um so litecoin litecoin is uh, actually i'll look at monero first um yeah i'll look at monero then i'll come back to litecoin um so yeah i mean on monero on a longer time frame it looks like it's flat 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 line from that um, huge parabolic run of uh, and dump of um 2018 2017 um on a short term time frame it doesn't really look that bullish per se but it looks flat you know like it's going to maybe pop down and drop down to that resistance zone of you know 53 dollars or whatever i didn't do the price sorry so so um monero is at 86 dollars 86.9 dollars uh it's had a high of 90 dollars and a low of 85 dollars and it's down three percent um yeah it, it looks like it could you know easily pop down to that 50 dollar mark and then if we zoom in to a short term 
time frame here then again it looks like a dead cat bounce um and monero is going to drop down to that resistance zone of 53 or 50 dollars um but it, it's entirely dependent upon bitcoin if bitcoin shoots up then so will monero um uh Let's have a little look at Litecoin. So Litecoin's at ninety dollars. It's had a high of ninety four dollars and a low of uh, ninety dollars. Um, uh, out of all the kind of altcoins, um, Litecoin to me is looking like the one which has got the nicest resistance um, uh, zone in this sort of channel, which is building on the the upside over the past six months. Here, it's just popped back into that channel. It popped out of it for a while and then uh, quickly dropped back into that channel which it built. Um, so and you know, but again, you know, if if, if it were on its own and not so entirely dependent upon bitcoin then that would be a positive thing but who knows what, what bitcoin's going to do uh, let's have a look at gold so yeah the other news would be bitcoin being seen as something of a safe haven which gold is its reputation of a safe ha as a safe haven is being somewhat tarnished as it hasn't reacted at all um, to any of the market news over the past couple of months so um yeah it's still at sort of around 1300 dollar mark the bull the um, the gold bugs say it's been manipulated, but it, that doesn't really matter if it's been manipulated or not. Um, the fact that it's it's losing that reputation as a safe haven is bad for gold, good for Bitcoin. Uh, obviously, it still is a safe haven. If if everything you know goes to crap, then gold's a great place to put your money. Um, historically, it's got hundreds of thousands of years of, of that being the case. So, um, but uh, yeah, it's. Um, it's uh, it's yeah, it's, it's not reacted as it should have to to to, to the stock markets. So let's have a little look at the news feed on gold. Gold price is flat as U.S. dollar edges up. So um, U.S. dollar sounds like it's been strong at the moment. Um, good or natural gas? Gold's lost to tarnish. There we are. So someone I was talking about gold's uh, ability to be a safe haven being being tarnished. Um, yeah. Let's have a look at the S&P 500. S&P 500 is. It's looking like it's kind of recovering from the uh, Asian uh, US um, uh, trade deal thing which was going on last week. Uh, let's have a look at the news feed. So stocks edge up as trade war simmers, dollar steady markets wrap. So yeah, I mean the the um, uh, the news has been sold and bought and um, uh, even if there's, there's not been much, you know, uh, if we haven't made much progress on the, the trade deal just as, as a something which can affect the price it's um it, it seems to be just simmering away in the background and i think everyone knows that it probably will improve uh tariffs could lead to markdowns in retail shares okay so there's still some bearish news there um a top u.s pension loads up on alibado kronos and zolo stock okay uh yeah so yeah let's keep an eye on that so let's have a look at the bitcoin reddit and see what bitcoin land's been up to um so pinned at the top there, don't invest recklessly, very true. 12 million people are going to get a good look at Bitcoin tonight in 60 minutes. Uh, so that was cool. That was a cool video to watch. There is a link for the video if you go a little bit further down, I think. Pretty sure. Oh, yeah. Um, I can't find it. There is a link for the video somewhere in there. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's the area. Full full 60 minutes video. And by full 60 minutes video, it's not 60 minutes, it's 13 minutes, by the way. Um, and in that, they they talk very much today. They talk to Charlie Schramm and, and his experience with Bitcoin. And obviously, he was there involved in it from uh, early on and um, uh, uh, became very rich off it and then um, didn't conduct himself properly in the business world uh, and made a few bad decisions, ended up in prison and then came out and then pretty much lost everything and then we managed to build everything back up so uh, his life story is 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 mirrored bitcoin's um price volatility i would say uh so let's have a little look down here um da -da 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 -da. i believe investing in bitcoins gives millennials an opportunity of closing the wealth gap okay uh, bank of england's chief economist said bitcoin could replace cash in 20 years now that sounds extremely bullish but this is actually this is based off this post is based off a news article which was based off uh, a flimsy reddit post so yeah it's a good example of um uh, a story perpetuating itself um, even though there's there's no you know foundation in the story itself so um 
yeah, so yeah, it's it's pretty pretty neutral. If someone gave you eight thousand dollars, would you spend it all on Bitcoin? I think a lot of the people in this Reddit probably would. Forbes, Bitcoin threatens to take power from the US Federal Reserve. I actually got this article up. Um we'll have a look at this now. So this is pretty cool. So it the, the article, the uh it was Brad Sherman um uh, speech about the uh, Bitcoin um, trying to take power from the US Federal Reserve uh, that managed to get into Forbes which is which is good um, obviously this means you know Bitcoin's working this is what Bitcoin was designed to do it's designed to take power from the Federal Reserve so that's a good thing um, so yeah, it's probably worth having a little look flick through and read that that article it's a good article um, Winklevoss twins double down on Bitcoin is gold 2.0 narrative uh, so there's a quote here, Bitcoin is gold 2.0, it matches or beats gold, gold across the board, its market cap is 140 billion, gold mar gold's market cap is 7 uh, trillion, do the math. Um, so yeah, I mean that sounds very like bullish, but I mean I would say that on in gold's defence, like gold's thousands of times more useful than Bitcoin currently, um, you know we use gold in a fast array of electronics and it's used in dentistry, it's obviously used in jewellery, and it's used in somewhere to store your money, and it's traded. Um, so in, in, in the world, gold has much more use than, than, than Bitcoin currently has. Um, I think the commodity, just as the, we found more and more commodity uses for gold, I think um, we'll find more and more commodity uses for Bitcoin, and that will actually snowball and um, far surpass uh, um, gold's ability to be useful. Uh, so at the moment we're at two percent of gold's um, market cap, but we're you know thousands of times less useful. So yeah, <laughs> that, that that makes me feel quite bearish about the Bitcoin price. But um, I think we all understand that obviously Bitcoin um, uh, is far more useful than gold um, and will be much more useful than gold in the future. Um, but in actual real world use, currently it's it's you know it's it's not as useful as gold. Uh, so yeah, so that's uh, that was an interesting article. Um, uh, obviously, you know now with Lightning Network, we can do payments, and we're competing with traditional payment networks. Um, so we're not only gold; we're also this incredible payment network, which is being built on top of uh, uh, Bitcoin on on, the, on top of the digital gold. So um, so yeah, we, we we have many use cases other than gold, but gold digital gold is is a very good way of thinking of Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, inflation bug. So the inflation bug is still a danger to more than half a billion Bitcoin full nodes. Um, so this is quite concerning. This this uh, article that um, uh, more than half of the Bitcoin full nodes haven't updated um, uh, from the inflation bug uh, scare of, a, of, sort of seven months ago. I think it was seven eight months ago, um, which was failed wasn't picked up by the Bitcoin core team and could. Have made it possible for new for a double spend to happen, where you could have new coins in being introduced into the system, and um, we could inflate the supply beyond twenty one million, which would obviously, I don't think I, sh I actually don't think it'd be the end of the world. Like if it happened, and then we patched the bug, and we ended up with some more coins in the system, um, but uh, it it would be in the short term be very negative for Bitcoin and the Bitcoin price. But uh, yeah, um, so. Uh, there was some interesting quotes by Luke Dash Jr. in the article, uh, in which he he talks about the actual amount of nodes out there. So um, we have, uh, you know, ten thousand ish nodes are, are cited as being the amount of nodes out there. But Luke Dash Jr. says says it's far higher that it's probably around one hundred thousand nodes because um, a lot of them aren't listening nodes, uh, so they're not visible uh, on the network. Um, you can't get to them; they're, they're you know, blocked behind firewalls. Um, uh, he also goes on to say that the bug itself, if you if you haven't updated your software, then your full node which you're running is essentially just like a light wallet or equivalent to. You haven't got the properties of a full node, um, so you do really need to upgrade. So if you haven't upgraded your full node, then please do upgrade your Bitcoin full node. And uh, even if you have or you don't run a full node, then um, it's probably worth like if you see this article on Twitter or whatever, like retweeting it to, to help awareness and make, make sure people upgrade their nodes. Apart from that, that's it for today. Um, I hope you have a very pleasant Monday, as pleasant as you can. And uh, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.